welcome to this episode. I am Frédéric Desbiens from the Oracle mobile platform team. Previously, I explained you what connector APIs are in the Oracle mobile cloud service and how they can make your life easier. Today, you will learn how to create a REST connector API and how to use it in your MCS custom code. As you will see, REST connector APIs are as easy to create as they are easy to use. Let me be clear from the start. You could code everything MCS connector APIs do yourself. Simple web service calls are not that difficult to implement in Node.js anyway, but if you go that route, you need to take care of security yourself. And if you want to get your analytics data on your external web service calls for business or technical purposes, you will have to add those to your code. Why not take advantage of what MCS gives you? To better understand how connector APIs interact with the rest of MCS, let's now have a look at how they behave at runtime. REST connector APIs use JSON data end-to-end. -end. This makes the flow straightforward. When the connector API receives a request made by a custom API, the connector API retrieves the URL of the external web service to call, applies connector rules to the URL, and adds the headers and parameters required by the security policy if one has been applied. Then, the connector API sends the request to the external web service. Eventually, the connector API will get a JSON response back from the external service, which it will send back to the custom API. Creating a new REST connector API is really simple. The only technical parameter you need is the URL for the root of the REST resources. Let me illustrate this through an example. Suppose a server named cloud1.oracle.com exposes a number of REST resources from summit REST slash resources. One of those resources is a list of the countries of the world and has been assigned the name countries. Given that context, the full URL could look like this, cloud1.oracle.com slash summit REST slash resources slash countries. For maximum flexibility, you should not use the full resource URL as the remote URL for your MCS REST connector API. You should rather remove slash countries from it in this case. So this would give cloud1.oracle.com slash summit rest slash resources. If you leave slash countries at the end, then your custom API will only be able to access the country's resources and will not be able to access other REST resources found at the same location. When you create a new connector API, the seventh step of the wizard enables you to specify connector rules. But what are those exactly? REST connector API rules are used to add headers or query parameters with fixed values to outgoing requests. It is possible to make connector API rules apply only to a subset of the available HTTP methods. Now, if you want to define or change parameter values dynamically at runtime or even override the values defined by rules, then you should do this in the code of your custom API. And remember, any header or query parameter values set in custom APIs or directly by the mobile client itself will always take precedence over connector API rules. Let's take the example of openweathermap.org. Like most REST APIs, openweathermap.org supports several output formats. It is possible to select one by using a query parameter named mode, which is defined by the API. Since MCS expects JSON, it is a good idea in this case to add a rule for the mode parameter even if JSON is theoretically the default output format for the service. Better safe than sorry. It is certainly possible to handle cases like these in code. The point of connector rules, however, is to make your custom APIs simpler by reducing the quantity of code you write. The third step in the new REST connector API wizard is about security policies, which enable you to configure authentication and encryption on web service connections, among other things. Security policies will be covered in another episode. The final step in the wizard is the connector API tester. It enables you to make requests through the connector for all the REST resources available according to the connector API's resource URL. 
All the HTTP verbs supported by the web service are supported as well. A nice thing about the tester is that it enables you to verify that the connector API works properly without having to write code in a custom API to test it. You now have defined a connector, but what do you have to do in order to use it? Connector APIs are not reachable directly by mobile apps. To use a connector API, you will have to call it in the code of a custom API. I will show how to do that in a few seconds. By the way, rest assured, no pun intended, that we will explain in detail how to write the code of custom APIs in later episodes. So, suppose you have created an API called My Customers, which exposes a customer's resource. In addition, you have defined a connector API and named it Summit Customers. Consequently, its internal endpoint in MCS will be slash mobile slash connector slash Summit Customers. The connector abstracts the underlying web service calls. This means anything added to the internal endpoint will be added at the end of the URL used for the actual web service call. In this case, we will add slash customers. This means that if the URL for the web service is cloud1.oracle.com slash summitrest slash resources slash sales, the actual URL called at runtime will have slash customers added at the end. In this example, most of the sample code is a simple pass-through, which will pass the mobile client's request as is to the connector and will return the connector's response unmodified to the web client. To the mobile client, sorry. <laughs> the line starting with the service.get means that the API will process get requests made to slash mobile slash custom slash my customers slash customers. In other words, it will accept gets made to the customer's resource. The key line of code in the sample is this one. Here, I'm doing a get because that's what I need to call on the remote web service. Also, slash mobile slash connector slash summit customers is the internal URL of the connector. Since we have slash customers added, this means the code calls the get method on the customer's resource through the connector API. As a consequence, MCS will add slash customers at the end of the base URL for the remote web service. In this example, the connector API has been defined with this base URL for the remote web service, cloud1.oracle.com slash summit rest slash resources slash sales. The actual web service call will have slash customers added at the end. Before you can use a connector in your custom API, it is essential to declare a dependency on it in the package.json file in the custom API's JavaScript implementation. This dependency, which mentions the version number of the connector API, will have an impact on the lifecycle of the custom API. For example, if you try to publish the custom API without having published the version of the connector API it relies on, MCS will inform you of the situation. This shows how important it is to keep the dependency declaration up to date as your API evolves. REST connector APIs are a simple yet powerful tool. Not only they take care of security and analytics, they also reduce how much code you need to write through connector rules. Their usage is optional, but I'm sure you will find them very helpful. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Yeah.